welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, yesterday we read from, uh, from Genesis, uh, the first marriage, and we saw how it's, it's used as an illustration of God's love for his church. And by church, we're referring to all believers of, of all time. We're not talking about a, a church building or one specific uh, church church body or denomination. We're talking about everyone that <clears throat> that Jesus has brought into uh, brought into the faith. So uh, we often talk about how Jesus is a perfect example to us, and we know what the Christian life should look like when we look at Jesus. We see his selflessness. We see his his kindness and his sacrificial love, and we rightly try to make our lives look more like his. And of course, this, this pleases him. That's what he wants us to do, and that's what's good for us. And it's an act of worship to do so. But as we look at Jesus, we, we constantly have to be reminded that this isn't all of what Jesus came for. This isn't the primary purpose. Remember, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The example, um, the example is, is for believers who have been saved, um, who are out of thanks, living and turning their lives over to him. Um, but we are only believers who are saved because Jesus saved us and because he gave us faith to believe. That is first. It's first both chronologically, it happened before we did anything, and it's first in importance. It's primary. It's the most important thing. Uh so in this section of Ephesians that we're about to read, Paul gives instructions to husbands. In the section just before, he gave some instructions to wives. In the section just after, he gives instructions uh, to children. But in the verses we're going to read, um, it's, it's primarily, primarily directed at husbands. No one is left out. No one is, is off the hook. And yes, this does still apply to everyone. Um, but, but the reason he... He does this, and in this, the longest of those three sections um, is because Paul's talking about two things at once. He's not just talking about the relationship of husbands to wives. He's also talking about the relationship of Christ to his church, as we'll see really clearly in the, va- the very last line. This is Ephesians chapter 5, uh, starting at uh, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must, al- must also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is God's word. Um, so, Paul there at the end, notice how he quoted from Genesis 2, which we read yesterday, uh, which talked about the husband and wife actually becoming one flesh. Eve was built from the rib of Adam, so they were one flesh. And and God says in marriage that this is what he accomplishes. Paul adds to this by telling us about a mystery. And by mystery, we don't mean something dark and hidden that can't be understood. We mean something that couldn't be understood unless it's explained, something that wasn't understood before it was explained. Um, And the mystery is that this is what actually happens with Christ and the church. Paul says to the Ephesians, and here now also to you, I'm talking about you guys. So verse uh, 25 said that uh, Christ made the church holy. And I think I mentioned this once a while ago, that when we say holy, we're not talking in a moral sense. Um, and that's that's how we often use it in our in our day to day language, right? Um, you know the phrase "holier than thou." That's how we think of it. That's someone who's saying, um, 
accusing someone of of thinking of themselves as morally superior to someone else. But that wouldn't make any sense if we're talking about the most holy place in the temple. What would even it even mean to say that a room is morally superior to some other place or some other room? Holy, in this case, means something else. It means set apart. It means completely separate from sin. Uh, the room, that room in the temple was a place where sin and sinners couldn't go because that's where the priests would go to encounter God, and there can be no sin in the presence of God. And as a result of that, Christ had to cleanse the church, and he did it with his own blood, made holy, separate now from sin, separate, uh, set apart for a special purpose. He made the church to be without stain, without wrinkle, without blemish, so that it could be his own body. So like I said, we could talk about what that means for husbands, how they're supposed to love their, their wives, but let's face the reality. If we were to talk too much about that and only about that, it would just make all the husbands feel really terrible because we would see this isn't describing us. This isn't describing what we do. It's showing us how far away we are from this standard. None of us, men or women, can live up to a standard like this. Uh, this, this perfect, selfless, sacrificial love. But first, and more important, what does this tell us about how Jesus loves us? Especially as we consider how we fail to live up to example, it shows us that the love of Jesus is eternal, and it's unending, and it's undeserved. Um, he loves us, weak and worthless sinners that we are, and he gathered us together to form his church, his own body, so that he could love us as his own bride, set apart to be his most precious possession. So having been brought together in marriage, we are his body. And just think of what that means then. Can you be oblivious or unconcerned when a part of your body is in pain? If you cut your finger uh, can you imagine just ignoring it, saying, like, well, it's only one of ten. I've got nine others that are perfectly fine. Um, and it's less than a 1% of my whole body, so overall I'm doing good. No, you're going to take care of it. You're going to notice it. You're going to be completely aware, and you're going you're gonna to do everything you can to, to heal it. Um, so how about a step further? What if you woke up one morning and your finger just wasn't there? You'd notice, right? Um now, I don't want to probably take this metaphor too far, <laughs> but Jesus says we are his body. He loves us um, as we love our own bodies, uh, and you can't, you can't ignore it because when a, a part of your body is in pain, the whole body is in pain. When a part of your body needs something, the whole body needs something. So whatever pain or need you feel today or tomorrow or ever in this life, Jesus feels it. Jesus is concerned about it. Uh, and Jesus knows best how to handle it, how to deal with it, how to heal it. Because he's our head. We're connected with him. And that means we're never without him. It's, it's impossible to be without him. We're his own body. Where one goes, so goes the other, body and head together. You're precious to him. You're loved. You're forgiven. You're made holy. You're brought close, uh, connected to him now and always. In his name, amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.